Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two of our three-part series uh, covering the basics of Rhino 8, including user interface, basic modeling, and the final video will be the uh, technical illustration with annotation portion of the, uh, the, the program. So three parts. Um, I will cover rendering and uh, materials in a later video, um, but this is going to be what we're going to be modeling in this video here. So we're going to be starting off where we left off last time with the basic box. Let's start over from the beginning. We've already got the box the right size here. But in case you weren't following along and, and actually um, uh, creating this, I'll do it again one more time just for everyone to kind of follow along. My advice on all of these videos would be basically to watch it front and back all the way once and then follow along creating the objects. So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to um, draw a box, B-O-X, enter. Using my grid, I'm gonna go to this little grid mark here, pull out the box, type one apostrophe six, quote, enter. Then one apostrophe, enter, and then six, quote, to get a one foot six by one foot by six inch box. So the next step is to, um, round the edge and then chamfer this little base area here. And if we look, I've actually got a technical schematic drawing of the box uh, of our modified quadrilateral here. So you can see one foot six, one foot, and we're gonna be basically replicating this drawing in this tutorial. So three inches, two and a half, you know, you've got all of the different dimensions here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let me actually put this right there and we'll put this right here. Okay. And another thing I like to do is especially, you know, for y'all's sake, <laughs> um, well, that's too small. It's still going to be hard to see on like a laptop screen, but I'm going to go ahead and collapse these windows. If I click on this little right here and this guy right here, we've got no windows on the sides there. And since I'm using the command line, um, I can see my command line up here. Um, you can kind of follow it along. Actually, let me go ahead and pull this down a little bit. You can kind of see some of the previous steps. I've got a little bit more up here. You can see what I'm typing too. So, all right, let's go ahead. And first we're going to round off this corner here. And you can see uh, it's six inches tall. Um, and then there's the, the base of the uh, radius is at three inches, uh, which three minus six is, Three. So uh, we got a three inch radius on this side. So I'm going to type fillet edge. And you can see it going up there. Boom. And then I'm going to hit R for radius, enter, three, quote. And then we're going to hit click on this and hit enter twice. And so that creates a the radius there. All right. And of course, the nice thing is you can pause and rewind at will to kind of uh, follow along a little easier. Next, we've got this double little beveled edge here where we've got a beveled edge here and a little bevel here. We can do that move in one fail swoop. So let's go ahead and go fillet edge. Sorry, no, that's that's that would radius it. Let's go chamfer, sorry, chamfer edge. Make sure you're putting the word edge in there because there's different types of chamfer. And we want to go next chamfer distance is one. No, we're going to change that. I can click on it even and go four, shift, quote, enter. And then uh, we can now click on the edge here and the edge here. And you can see the numbers here are in uh, uh, millimeters, right? So I can hit enter, enter. Cool, so we're almost there. Um, the next thing we can do is uh, we can, we, we're gonna take a notch out of here. And I'm gonna do it in two different ways because I wanna show a new tool in, um, in, uh, in, in our new software here. So first way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna draw another box. And this box, I don't even care where I put it, just click. And I'm gonna go six, quote, enter, 
six quote enter six quote enter so it's a six inch by six inch by six inch box now this is where the object snaps are going to come in handy so i'm going to open these this little side panel up here um, snaps right here we need to make sure we have end and mid on if you don't have mid on you're not gonna be able to grab it so uh, the way this lines up if you do the math you got two and a half inches and two and a half inches uh, it's basically the middle point of this line right here is where this has to go so i told you all in the past that um, that object snaps basically grab um, an object by a location so i want to grab this by the midpoint right here and move it to the midpoint on this top right here. So I'm gonna use the relative positioning of the two objects to overlap just the right way. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to now go move, enter, click on this object, enter, find that midpoint just by hovering over it. You can see this is what the snap does. See, it, it says mid, that means I'm grabbing that midpoint on that line. And I'm going to look for the mid. And it doesn't matter if it's moving wonky. You know, that doesn't matter because the snaps will take priority over, um, over anything else. So I'm looking for the mid right there. And, and you can rotate around still while, you're, while you have that command open. And I'm just looking for the mid and click. And so now where those two parts overlap, I can Boolean difference. So I'm going to type Boolean difference. All Boolean operations are is a multiple of steps to come to a final solution, whether that is joining objects together or removing them from one another. And most of this uh, lingo is going to be the same in different pro uh, programs. So Boolean operations are the same ling language, whether or not you're using Blender, Maya, um, AutoCAD, Fusion 360. So knowing this terminology also leads to better understanding of other software too. So Boolean difference, enter. I'm gonna select first what I wanna keep, which I wanna keep the big part, and then I hit enter, and then I select this part, and I hit enter, and that removes that notch out. Very cool. But there's other ways that I wanna show this too. So I'm gonna undo. Um, and you notice actually when you have multiple objects and I, and I go to select something, it, this menu pops up. So do I want this object that's highlighted in pink or do I want this one? I want this one, click on it, and then I hit delete. All right, so now I wanna talk about Auto Seaplane, which is a new tool. Um, I don't know if it's on by default. If it is, turn it off. I don't, it wasn't on on mine when I, when I opened it up, but Auto Seaplane um, is an amazing tool, but it also can be a pain in the butt if you don't know what it's doing. So. I'm going to click to turn that on. Um, and then what I want to do is I'm going to uh, find where I want my C plane to be. So if I click on an object, it selects the whole thing. However, if I use command shift click if you have a Mac or control shift click if you have a PC, it highlights this uh, just one face, right? And what Auto C plane does is any face that I select, like say I select this one, it makes it so the construction plane is associated with that. So control shift, click, control shift, click on that. And now I have the construction plane on the top here. So anything I draw will go on that top plane, which is super powerful stuff, but it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you look, you got two and a half inches and two and a half inches on this top area here. Uh, this is of course that back end that's radius there. So if I wanted to draw a rectangle right there, what I would do is I would actually just use a line tool and go to this end point and start to drag over with ortho turned on, okay, which ortho again is down here or holding down shift. And I can go 2.5 shift quote, enter. So that gives me, and then click. Um, that gives me this little line here which has, I have the gumball turned on. I'll talk about the gumball in a second here. Turn that off. Um, that gives me this little line here, which is gonna be my guideline. So now I can draw an, um, my rectangle. And I know this is a more difficult way of doing it. That's why I always do it the other way. Um, but I'm gonna show some new tools. It'll be great for other things, basically. So six, quote, enter, six, quote, enter. 
and it went the wrong way. <laughs> Let me move, enter, grab that midpoint, put it right there. Okay. So what the gumball is, by the way, um, if I click on a solid object, you can see I have um, different options here and I can move the object up, down, left and right using the arrows. I can rotate the object using, um, using this or this. I can change the scale of it. I can pull it this way to change the scale of it. I can pull it this way, change the scale of it or I can hold down shift and change the whole scale of it by grabbing any one of those and holding down the shift button. All right. But there's also some new gumball tools inside of Rhino eight that are really cool. So um, if I grab this rectangle now, you can see there's some extra little doohickeys on the arrows here. This one right here is uh, a cut. This one is an extrude. Okay, so if I um, extrude this one, you can see just like that, it cuts it. So super cool, super powerful, very effective for, for um, creating, um, using parts to kind of uh, separate out other parts. I can also just use it to kind of notch it in a little bit. Um, there's other, another really cool tool that they just added, which was an AutoCAD forever. And I was one of my favorites and I'd been wishing that they would do on something like this for a while is press pull or pull, push, pull, hey, oh, yeah, push, pull. There it is. And that one, you can click on any face and kind of just push it around, which is great for, um, you know, architectural stuff, especially. And if you push it all the way through, it'll, it'll kind of cut it out. So th th those are all new in Rhino eight. Great tools. This one, I, I love the new gumball tools. I love the, um, auto C plane. I can just, I can automatically switch what I'm drawing on really quickly. Um, it used to be, you would have to control shift. Like if I turn this off, um, you could change the C plane by control shift clicking. You go to the C planes here and then you go to object and then it would align it to it. But now they've kind of taken away that guesswork, really a smart idea. But if you forget that it's on, it can be really a pain in the butt when you're grabbing different surfaces and you don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's go back over the top one here. Okay. So again, just drawing, I mean, and you can draw any shape and then this one cuts, like I said, control Z. This one extrudes to, uh, to, you know, make a, another object. And again, we can always rotate, move. Okay. So those are all really fun and great. So another thing I can do is I can just move that back into it and go Boolean difference, select, get rid of, boom. Okay. So that is some basics of, of Rhino, a really simple model. Um, the next video, I'm gonna show how to make this technical drawing over here um, and how to use layouts and stuff, um, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna end this one and I'll see you in uh, the final part of this introduction to Rhino 8.